All right, guys, welcome to another video. In this video, it's the last installment of our comparison between PDK and manual 911 GTSs. In the previous installments of this series, Milton and I drove each other's cars to get a feel for what's better. We wrap up our uh, opinions in this video as we are washing the cars after a hard day of driving. I thought it was an interesting conversation. If you wanna see the previous installments of this series, please look down in the description below. I think you'll find them really interesting. But without further ado, here's the video. It's funny, very, very similar in some instances and very different. Yeah, exactly. Very similar in the turns. Yes, the chassis. But very different in the way it puts the power down or the way it can put the power down. Right. Which can be everything in a curvy road. That's right. Very, I, you know what I learned today? What's I that? The whole PDK thing. What I learned today was just how far you can push these engines. Oh, yeah. Listen to the Yoko scream like that. I was like, dang. <laughs> you know, and it was doing, and it wasn't screaming like it was in pain. No, no. It was, it was just doing its thing. It was ready to go. It was ready to go. Give me more, sir. Can I have some more? <laughs> yeah, it was, that was pretty. That was an education for me because anytime now from now on that I fear, I don't really fear, I just kind of stay away from the RPM. But if I felt like I had to go in a pass or something, right, it wouldn't be a big deal for me. Right, right, right. I mean, I wouldn't like go, oh my God. Right. Did I hurt something? But you've been to Redline in your car before, right? I've been to Redline, but. Something about doing it in your car, man. I was like, damn, why doesn't it let go of the fucking gear? Oh, but, and you know what? There's that whine. What is that whine? It's when like, it gets up near, yeah, that Almost like a supercharger. Yeah, you know? yeah, but it's not. I, it's, it's like, do you think it's just the gears themselves? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, <laughs> Right at the end, like right the at last the last thousand RPM. You got it, you got it. You know what's funny? When I was on Watkins Glen, racetrack because you have the helmet on and you must uh do the track with the windows down i didn't hear that you know because there was so much wind noise in the car you, you just can't hear that but you said the windows have to be down yeah the windows have to be open when you do a track day oh. so all that wind noise kind of muffles so did they require you to put your uh visor close your visor and help no they didn't require that oh, that's interesting but they do want the windows down. Probably if you're in an accident, they can get to you quickly. But you don't hear that whine. Yeah, very. I'm like, I guess I don't have to worry about fucking uh, whining it out. No. This thing is programmed to whine. I tell you, on that ride home, I fell in love with the PDK again. It was like, oh, this is, this is awesome. Uh-oh. Through those turns. Yeah, yeah, but also just the sound of the engine, and I guess you know what it's. Easy. Yeah, but why wouldn't you be? You're used to. Yeah, and you know what? It's familiar. I'm very yeah, used to my car it's your after. Car. I mean, that car. You've done so much in that car. I mean. Yeah, I know how it feels and behaves, and what the shift patterns are. It's a comfort zone now with this car. Man, you've done so much in that. You've done so much more in that car than I've done in my car. But it's still fun. Yep. As much as I love the charger and the e-pad, I tell you, man, there's a part of me, I don't know, we'll see. What, what, what? What are we going to say? There's a part of me that could call the wagon anticlimactic. Really? No. After today and even before today because it's really more of a luxury car than it is a sports car right it's really not a sports car no it is capable of spanking your sports car ass <laughs> now you put randy probes in the in the 911 and you put randy probes in the wagon 
I gotta, on that course, I gotta believe the Porsche's getting better times. Okay, all right, because of the nimbleness. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the, the Mercedes at 600 and... Yeah, but you know, know what? Power, that that's 600 horsepower at 627, just like we proved today, that ain't gonna do you much good. That might be your, your Achilles heel. Right, in it the could. Right, in the right environment. It could be, yeah. You know, if you're booking along on a um, curvy, curvy road, this is why Porsches don't always lose to these power cars. That's right. You know, you have Corvette with all this horsepower, you know, this, that, and the other, and who won? Oh, the Porsche won. Exactly. How did that happen? <laughs> you know, it depends right. on the course, you know? Exactly. You know, these cars with the super wide tires in the back, even though the, the, the wagon has wide tires in the back. But these, these cars, you push it around the turn. I, I, I was probably at six tenths today, maybe seven tenths in some instances. But, you know, to me, it's not worth it to wreck the car trying to get at eight tenths. No, of tenths. course. You right. know what I mean? I'm, you know, I don't even know that I can drive my car at nine tenths. Without being reckless. Right, 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 because right. Because I'm not trained that way. What I would like to do, though, and I don't know if you'd like to do this with me, I would like to seriously look into the Porsche driving school. Oh, yeah. In Atlanta. Uh-huh. And, and possibly, um, you know, Maybe put some money aside and do that one day. Yeah. Yeah, man, that was fun. Well, I hope I hope you had fun. You know what? I gotta say this. You certainly drove my GTS like it was a Hertz rental car. <laughs> oh, did I? <laughs> <laughs> you drove it like you stole it. <laughs> and that's fun. You know. You need to let me think about that for a minute because you know. Uh, I, 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 this will be my observation on that. Yeah. Is your car is easier to drive? Yes. Than my car. Yeah, I would say that. You you alluded to something. I don't know if you finished your point, but you alluded to something. You don't. It doesn't require the amount of brain cells driving your car. Right. To be used on certain things. You can focus on other dynamics. Right. Like just apexes and steering and stuff. You know, depending on what mode you're in. Right. And even with a paddle shifter, the same thing. Doesn't require as much thought or worry about being delicate. Careful here, now, do this now. Um, clutch drag. Exactly. And all of that because it's just click, 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 clicking along. And you don't have to worry about the clutch drag. And Correct. getting it in the gear just before the turn. Breaking too late. Now shifting too late. All right, guys, I had to jump in as I was editing this video just to explain what Milton's referring to is something, a point that I was trying to make earlier in this series. And that is when I drive my PDK car either in a spirited way or on track or on autocross, I tend to leave the car in automatic mode and just go into Sport or Sport Plus. And that enables me to really focus on my driving line, my braking points, hitting the apexes. So I'm able to be a faster driver with the PDK car. Now one could argue that it's eliminating a part of the skill set when you're eliminating the manual shifting. And that's probably true, but I'm much faster as a driver in PDK. Anyway, back to the video. My only concern with you, 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 was, you were hitting it in those turns. Yeah. And my concern was when you total lift in a manual car, you're completely unengaged. Right, okay. When you lift in a PDK, you're not. Because it's still in gear. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah, right. So engine braking or something like that. Right. Let's put it this way. I think it's easier for a driver to go from this to that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's going to be more forgiving. Oh, yeah. Coming from that to this, I think this can be more unforgiving. Yeah. 
Did you feel I handled the car? Well, I'm using your quote. That's why I keep saying it. You drove it like a Hertz rental car. I was like, damn, you know, I don't even drive like this. Oh, <laughs> you're full of shit. <laughs> you don't drive like that. <laughs> no, that's not true. It was you feel like, like your, your, your girl was been, uh, she came home late and her hair was disheveled. Or exactly. <laughs> And, and you know what else, though? It was in good hands. I'm, I'm joking. It was definitely in good hands. But good you know what? You know the other factor is for anybody that's a you know, real driver. Well, and by a lot of drivers, there's not a driver I know that's a driver right. that's comfortable with being in that passenger seat. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, so whatever you're feeling is going to be multiplied by by three or four. You know, if there's any angst or anxiety, or if there's any level of attentiveness right. that's going on, if the antennas normally in your life go up three inches, it's going up nine inches in the passenger seat of any car, of any car. and 12 inches in the passenger seat of your car. Exactly. Yeah. He's videotaping, just so you know. He gave the disclaimer, the disclaimer about a half hour into it, but... He's video, you're being, you're being Are recorded. Are you kidding me? No, right there, you're being recorded. All right. I'll say no more. Oh no. <laughs>